Hey, Rattler Nation, welcome back to another episode of Inside Rattlers. I'm Brian Krebs. And I'm Scott Brewster. We're going to go ahead and recap the 60-27 win over Tampa Bay Storm. We're also going to talk to some of the key players that played a role in the big win. And my boy here, he's got a little special something project he's working called Quick Hits. Oh, man. It's good. Hopefully it's going to be more <laughs> exciting and not as painful as that, but we'll see. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the highlights between the Arizona Rattlers and the Tampa Bay Storm. It all started with the Nick Davila pass to, guess who, Rod Windsor in the end zone. Look at that. Made it 6-0 for the Rattlers. The extra point was missed, though. Later in that quarter, we've got, hey, look, another familiar face for Rattler fans. It's Maurice Purify. Welcome back, Maurice. Beautiful to have him back in that beautiful diving catch in the end zone. Definitely won't be his last either. Fast forward into the second quarter now. Tampa Bay has the ball in their driving, but oh, look at that, fumble Ruski, and Tyree Glasper picks it up and runs it all the way back to the end zone. Boltus can't make the tackle. Then also Tampa Bay is on offense again, and then Boltus goes back, and then he gets sacked by, guess who, Tyree Glasper. Like I said, a man was playing possessed. And then we got the ball back on the 18-yard line. Nick Davila getting ready, throws it, and guess who, hits Michael Benson for a little screen pass all the way out to the two-yard line. The Rattlers would score in the very next play. That was a key 12-yard pass by It was. Rod Windsor here in the back of the end zone again. Guess what, another Rod Windsor touchdown, high five and some fans. Boltus is gonna try it again, and guess what? Oh, it's tipped and then picked off by Kerry Reed. Kerry Reed has a little fun with him, and boom! Boltus is knocked down as Kerry Reed hits the end zone. Take a look at that replay again. Guess who it is? It is Vasquez that levels Boltus as Kerry Reed shows off as he gets into the end zone. I mean, Kerry Reed's showing that he can play that jack. Final score again was 60-27. Arizona Rattlers are now 3-0 on the season. Tampa Bay is 0-3. Your Arizona Rattlers coming through like that. And you know what? With Tyree, I had a chance to catch up with Tyree and talk about the game that he had. Tyree, let's go back to week two. We're sitting in the, in the breakfast area. Pre-game breakfast. I mentioned to you a couple sacks, pick, and then you didn't play. Yeah. So, were you a little motivated coming into Week Three's game, home opener, to try and have them inner side <laughs> bursting out? Yeah, yeah, I was a little motivated. Yeah, like I said, I was. We talked pre-game. I still, I still wasn't quite sure if I wasn't gonna play or not. Like I said, it was a game time decision. It was still up to coach. Uh, you know, make that. I was still praying that they, they let me play and. I uh, got to the game and they, uh, they decided it was best just me go ahead and take that week and rest, let you know, let my body heal up and get ready for the long haul. And I, uh, I was a little upset, you know, because just the competitor in me wanted to play, get out there with my teammates, be out there with my brothers and help. But yeah, but I, I thought about that uh, that conversation we had. Like I said, and I said something to you pre-game this game, and I was like, hey man, remember that, remember that uh, stat line you gave me? And I, I I didn't quite hit the mark, but I I, I got kind of close. I think you I think you laid your 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 trademark on the game though. You had a block extra point, you had a fumble recovery for thirty two yards, you also had a big sack for nine yards. So I think you made an impression on the game. Yeah, I think I did a little something, you know. Like I said, it's a little bit of built up aggression I have from not playing the week week before that and a little fresh legs, you know, from not playing and so I know I had to come out uh, this week and uh, impose my will a little bit, help my brothers out, help the D-line and the defense and the, and the team, you know, oppose our will on Tampa Bay. Yeah, we was, we was out there on defense, and they were defense. You know, the knife man was getting loud, and I looked around like, man, this is like, you know, a playoff game. And I, I knew it had to be something special with the numbers. I didn't know quite what the numbers was until after the game. And, and I told my D-line, I said, y'all hear that? And they were just like, you know, we, we feed off that, man. We love the knife man. We got the best fans in the arena football. And they came and showed they came and showed their uh, fan support, you know, for us being away the first two games. I think they was itching to get at home and, and see us like we was itching to get home and, and see them and play in front of them and give them a good show Saturday. Here's a stat for you, true stat. Most fans ever that you guys have had since April 16, 2010. So literally five years to the day, you guys broke that record. So how about that for Rattler Nation? Man, that, that, that just shows that the knife, knife Man is the best fan, uh, the fan class that we have in arena football, and they came and showed. And I hope uh, next week they come in and do the same thing. Now, you're 3-0. You're, you're getting ready to go on the road. You face Jacksonville, who lost a tough game Monday to Orlando. They are 1-2. and two. Anything change? I mean, because you know Jacksonville was in the Arena Bowl last year, so they are a decent squad. Just things haven't gone right early in the season. Have you guys changed your approach when you're getting ready to face them? Uh, no, uh, we, we, we got the same approach everybody, man. Jacksonville's a great team. They got great players on both sides of the ball, great coaches. 
uh, we know it's going to be a battle, man. It's one of the teams that we can uh, potentially see down the road. And uh, so we got to go out there and uh, leave our mark, you know, and uh, we know it's going to be a tough battle, man. They got a great old line. Uh, they got one of, one of the best uh, fullbacks in the game. And so I'm looking forward to it. The defense looking forward to it. The whole team looking forward to go out to Jacksonville and put on a good show. Most important question of the day, 94 suiting up in Jacksonville, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> All right, we'll see you out there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That was good stuff from Tyree. You know, when he, he came out and made a point to me and said, you know, what did you tell me in Anaheim? Because we all know he missed the game in Anaheim. And during breakfast in the game in Anaheim, I said, hey, you're going to go out and get two sacks, get a pick, joking around with him. He's all, you know what, what was that comment you made before pregame today? And he, he delivered. Absolutely. Definitely delivered on that promise. Another player that put points on the scoreboard on Saturday's game is Chase Deadder. Brian caught up with him, and this is what he has to say. Or Chase Deanner. Chase, talk about your role that you had. You had four catches, 37 yards, but most importantly, you were able to score. How, how did that feel in the fact that you were able to get in with Nick? You know what, to start off, it was, it was just nice to be home in front of all those fans out there. I mean, it was amazing. We had 14,000 plus fans or something like that, and it just really got our energy going as an offense and as a team. And uh, it was just nice, nice to do my part. I mean, I, I was moved around to a different position and, uh, and tried to do the best that I could, and uh, we pulled off the victory. How has practice been going when you come off a, a game like you had with you? Like I said, you had four catches and the 37 yards. You know, do you, do you guys, you and Nick, practice any differently? I mean, is there something that you guys can take from the game into practice to build for the next game? Yeah, I mean, each week we're getting better. Uh, I mean, we're we're never good, and we, we want to be better than we are last week. Uh, we're always pushing ourselves to score more, pushing ourselves to make more catches, and uh, we're always looking to improve. Now, you mentioned the, the packed house. There's 14,872 crazy Rattler Nation fans that came in. So playing in front of that environment, I mean, Portland was barely five. L.A. had 6,000. So coming home, we get twice as many at Rattler Nation. Kind of pumps you guys up a little more, gives you a little more oomph in, inside of you. Oh, totally. Coming out, of, coming out, of the, out of the locker room, seeing all those fans screaming and yelling, and it was just a great feeling to be back home, be back in our stadium, with the, back in the snake pit with all those crazy fans that are the, the best in the league, and I had a great time. Now, you know Rattler Nation is actually starting to follow you and actually gets, gets um, involved with what you do. They want to see more out of Chase, so does that kind of inspire you more to try and give a little back, back to them? I appreciate it. I mean, I mean the fans, they're, they're the ones that make this game great, and uh, we're out there trying to put on a show for them, and uh, I'm going to do the best that I can for them, make them proud, and ha proud to be a Rattler fan. This coming up week, you guys travel, make that long trip to Jacksonville. You guys are looking to improve to 4-0. You got a tough opponent coming off a, a big loss to Orlando on Monday night. Do you guys have any different preparation that you took going into that game plan? I mean, still, so we're just we're working on ourselves. Uh, we got to get better on offense uh, with timing, catching, routes. Uh, we just got to go out there with our game plan and do our thing, and we'll, we'll come out victorious. Now, with so many talented wide receivers now with um, Windsor, with Purify, with yourself, with Washington, with Amos, when everybody gets in. I mean, you kind of find it that you guys are competing within yourselves to try and get Nick's attention? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely competing with each other, and we're also learning from each other at the same time. Uh, some guys have different skills. Some have quicker feet. Some guys run routes differently. So we're all trying to build off of each other to make ourselves great and work with Nick. Well, what's nice about you, and we've noticed this since last year, is you go over the middle, and you're a good size for, for Nick. I mean, you and Windsor are definitely good sizes. So, I mean, if you can work on the chemistry and, and the fact that he knows he can come to you, he's going to have the confidence to go over the middle. And then when you're over the middle, you can run over some of these DBs. We know that. We've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, Rod's been here. He's been with Nick for, what, what 10 years? Um, and this is my second, second, uh, second season with Nick. So, I mean, there's still little things that we're learning, and um, I'm learning from Rod as well, Kerry, uh, Purify, I mean, all the guys. I I'm just trying to get my spot in here and uh, do good. Well, good luck in Jacksonville. We'll see you out there. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was great to see Chase get back into the flow with four catches and even had a touchdown. Yeah, you know what? It gave uh, Nick Davila another weapon in this potent offense and basically gives confidence to Davila to say, you know what, I can go to someone else other than just Windsor. Do you know what time it is? Quick hits. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Here they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so as you know, Friday's Earth Day. So who wins in a fight, a bear or a shark? Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't know. I'm going to have to go with a bear. And why is that? A bear, uh, bear can use his hands. A bear. 
Where are they fighting at is the question. If they're fighting on land, I have to give it to the bear. In the water, I may still give it to the bear because the bears can swim. Is the bear in the water? Uh, it's Earth Day, so it's on Earth. I go with the bear. I mean, the shark ain't, can't really do nothing on land, per se, <laughs> unless he's in a pond or something. I... If you could have any superpower, what would it be? I would be a Super Saiyan. I would want, that would be my power, to be like a Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball Z. And why is that? That was my favorite show growing up. Uh, Goku used to be my childhood hero. And uh, they can fly and do everything else, so why not be able to have it all? And he can beat up Superman in a fight. I think I'd like to fly. Would you like to fly? I'd like to fly. I do. It beats walking, too. <laughs> Speed of light. Ooh. My superpower would have to be uh, flying. Flying? Flying. That's pretty popular. Popular. I can go anywhere. Pick up and just go. <laughs> All right, and final question. You're on the field. You just made a huge play. What's your favorite celebration dance? The BJ Raji. Double check. <laughs> I really don't have one. Just celebrate with the teammates. That's it. Just keep it simple. So you don't have one you can demonstrate real quick for me? I, no, I really don't. I just keep it simple with the teammates. Chest bump, high five. My first celebration ever was the dab, but uh, I may bring out something else new for uh, if I ever get another one. Uh, I'm going to just hand the ball back to the ref. Nah, I, I dance, but I like to keep it professional. You don't want to do a little demonstration for the camera? Well, uh, I'll give you a little something. I'll give you a little something. All right, so go ahead. It'll be like five seconds. Go ahead. Hey, Scott, that was another good job on Quick Hitch. You know, I think the players got involved, and some of their answers were, you know, they had us going. I hope, hope these guys get as much fun of it as we did. Yeah, I mean, I even have a lot of fun just asking them questions like, oh, man, I wonder what they're going to say. Right, just, just to hear their response. It's not just a generic response that they can take out of their back pocket, you know? Absolutely. That's what uh, makes it fun. On a serious note, Coach and I caught up. We recapped the 60-27 win over Tampa Bay. We also look forward to Jacksonville. Coach, let's, let's get right off into it. I mean, Rattler Nation, what else can you say about them? 14,782 strong, the most that you guys have had in exactly five years from April 16, 2010. Talk about that for a little bit. Well, Rattler Nation is very strong. I mean, you know, we've been getting stronger and stronger as the years go on as we build the program, and they've been a big part of why we've had a lot of success at home. Playing at home, it's a tough place to come in and win at the Snake Pit. And, and, uh, you know, just opening night, the, the crowd was amazing. I think the players were feeling the energy. I know the coaches were. And, uh, you know, it was, it was very good to be back home, uh, you know, playing in front of our fans. And, and uh, they were just outstanding. I mean, you know, when we needed them to, on key downs to, to, to raise the roof a little bit, they did. So, uh, you know, the energy was definitely in the building, and, and I know it's going to carry on throughout the whole season. Hey, Coach, let's go ahead and start off. The Rattlers have improved to 3-0 this season. Um, what is it about this team? It seems like there's something special that you guys are playing with. Um, just, just, just something exciting about this team. Well, I thought, you know, the coaches did a good job in the offseason of identifying talent. Now you bring them in, and, and, and we have a mixture of guys that hasn't been with the team. We turned over over 50% of our roster from last year. And, uh, you know, we've always had strong leadership in our locker room, but the, even the guys that we brought in this year, uh, some guys have played for other teams, but uh, they also have leadership qualities, and I just think we got a lot of good character in our locker room this year. And, and uh, you know, I'm left a little sting in us from last year, not finishing the way we wanted to finish. So, you know, I, I see the uh, hunger, but at the same time, we got to be humble and, and keep trying to get better as a football team as we move forward uh, throughout the season here. It, you know, it's about the journey, it's about the grind, and, uh, you know, we, we are going to take it one week at a time. I know that's an old coach's cliche, but. Um, you know, this, this business really is one week at a time, one day at a time. So uh, just things pop up all the time. And, and uh, But, you know, when you look at our locker room, uh, uh, you know, we got strong leadership in there, and, and, and that plays a big part of why we've had the success that we've had. Now, we've got – you've got a strong offense. You've got strong defense. We'll talk about the defense on later on in the show. But the offense is such high power with – Rod Windsor, you got Nick Davila who's leading in QBR 132. 
He's second in the league with 17 touchdowns. He's got zero picks. I mean, and then you got Rod Winters leading all receivers with the touchdowns. He's got 12. And then you got people like Jordan, who's, who's keeping Nick. The last two you guys, you and I have talked about where Nick has not been sacked for two games in a row. So it seems like the whole offense, from the line to the receivers to even the fullback Michael Benson, is, is all clicking and making such a high-powered offense. Well, it's, it's all coaching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, you know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you're only as good as the people around you. You know, and when you build a team, it's, it's like putting the pieces of the puzzle together and you go position by position and you want to be the best at every, at every position that you can be. And, and uh, you know, Nick is a great quarterback. He's done an outstanding job of, of leading our team on offense. But, you know, we also wanted to have great receivers here. You know, and, and this young man sitting to the right of you, you know, he, he's a great run after the catch, you know, receiver. Uh, what we call yak yards, that's yards after catch. And, uh, you know, a good route runner, great hands, you know, big physical presence, body. Uh, so, you know, those are, the, you know, so each each position, we're looking for different body types. Um, you know, and, and what do, the, do those, you know, what are we looking for at each position speed-wise? Um, so we can get different types of matchups. And then, you know, our offensive line, I mean, you know, um, you know, I know what I know you said, that, the offense line don't get a lot of praise, but they do from the coaches. I mean, because you know they got to protect our, our franchise quarterback, and, and uh, you know uh, we was able to go out and get Jordan in a, in a trade this year. Really worked out well for us. He's been doing an outstanding job for us, uh, along with the other. I mean, we rebuilt our whole offensive line this year, and uh, and we needed to. I felt like we gave up too many hits on the quarterback last year, uh, too many sacks, and and we felt like we you know to go win a championship. Just didn't feel like we were tough enough last year to go be able to go get that done. And this year we feel like we have those pieces in our locker room. And that was good stuff from Coach Guy. You know what? Every time I sit down and talk to him and recap stuff, the guy's a genius. He's got his trademark on the offense. He's got his trademark on the defense. He's got his trademark on special teams as well as in the front office. So you know what? Arizona Rattlers, it's an asset to have him running the show. That's all the time we have for you today. I'm Brian Krebs. And I'm Scott Brewster. We'll see you next time on Inside Rattlers.